Steve Shore, and I'm here to welcome you to an evening of talking about a very exciting exhibition called Crossing Borders, the Middle East, artists from the Middle East and the Americas. Crossing Borders brings together a wide range of artists from the Middle East and the Americas, both, both areas of the world where migration and immigration have been continuing and heart-wrenching realities for many years now. But immigration is in fact the backbone of our nation, and we are in every way a global and transnational world. All of us living in the United States, unless we are Native Americans, are either immigrants ourselves or the descendants of immigrants. And we're living in a world that is global and transnational. Every person and group has their own compelling reasons for having made what is often a perilous journey. Tony Kawan has made this the subject of both his work as an artist and the subject of a series of exhibitions he has curated, collectively known as Crossing Borders. Immigrant artists from Israel, Syria, Iran, Cuba, Haiti, and Venezuela and one artist has, who has migrated from the United States to Switzerland share their art and personal stories about their cultural heritage, intertwined with their American experience and the impact of immigration and the American culture on their lives and art making. Crossing Borders, Artists from the Middle East and the Americas focuses on building cultural understanding dispelling stereotypes, and fostering awareness of immigrants from the Middle East, Latin America, and beyond. Tony has received a number of grants from various national, state, and county arts organizations. The Florida Division of Cultural Affairs, which granted him his individual artist award for a specific cultural project in 2001-2002 and also the National Endowment of the Arts, Broward County Cultural Division, and Miami Cultural Affairs. And this exhibition has been shown twice in Miami-Dade in recent months, first at the Kendall Arts Center and very recently at Scope Art Fair in Miami. Two more exhibitions are being planned for Broward and Palm Beach County. Tony is here to tell you more about the artists and the exhibitions and three of the artists are here to join in the discussion that will follow. So, please welcome Tony Kowan. Thank you, Ellie, so much. And uh, I really appreciate this wonderful introduction uh, to the exhibition uh, Crossing Borders and to myself. And I am here uh, to present a short presentation to give the viewers a uh, background about the uh, Crossing Borders exhibitions, how this idea came to my mind and what influences me as an artist and how suddenly I became a curator based on necessity. And uh, so I would like to share my screen and uh, I want I uh, want to tell the viewers that we have a number of artists here with us. And once I do my presentation uh, about this show, the show, the exhibition project, uh, then I will introduce the, each artist uh, individually to talk about their own artwork and experiences as well. And then we can wrap it up with question and answers at the end. So I will share my screen right now. All right. Can everybody see my screen now? Yes. All right, wonderful. So this is the latest exhibition, uh, Crossing Borders. The idea of Crossing Borders was formed about two years ago. 
before the pandemic. And uh, I wanted to bring together a group of artists who we all share a uh, common background, common, uh, not, you know, like the Middle East, we all share the same culture experience. And in the Americas, Latin American artists share pretty much the same culture. And we're all immigrants here in the US and we in pursuit of the American dream, of course, uh, so is everybody else around the world. So this is a, a, a reality check to every Americans out there that this country is really built on the immigrations and the immigrants uh, pursue of happiness, success, and a better life. And this is strictly from the social and cultural uh, point of view uh, to show uh, each artist in their own individual style. Uh, and each artist has their own individual experiences from their heritage and the new world in America, and how each artist tried to combine or borrow some of the historical uh, and uh, histories from their own culture and what we all learned here in America since our arrival to America, uh, and how we were able to bring the old into the present uh, to show the old glories, to show the old culture, and to show, to show it in a very fresh contemporary way uh, so we can present uh, something for the public uh, to share, you know, our shared common uh, heritage and goals. So I will take you to... Uh, the next, back in August, we did the same exhibition uh, at Kendall Art Center in Miami. Yeah. And as you could see, each exhibition has been branded according to the art uh, gallery exhibition uh, where they have branded it slightly different to fit their brand, which is fine because that makes it unique each time we do an exhibition. The only common thing around these exhibition is the title and the artist. And many times we have uh, some of the same artists with different artworks and sometimes the art uh, uh, hosting uh, gallery, they bring their own one or two artists to add to the exhibition, which makes it exciting because we want to engage the, the local artists and the local community in each area where we do the exhibition. And this is just an overview of the concept of uh, crossing borders, which Ellie, you mentioned it pretty much. You, you articulated it perfectly um, and explains the goal and some of the uh, common uh, threads between us, all the artists, and how we emerged, you know, and bring the past into the present. And we have... Uh, exhibited number of artists who are not here with us. And of course, we, we have uh, Elan Everbook uh, is with us. Jose Bidia uh, was exhibited in August in Miami. He's not with us. Linda Bihar is with us. Eduardo Duval Carey from Haiti. And uh, he exhibited with us in Miami, but he's not with us today. Uh, Kelly Fisher. 
Uh, she's an uh, American Swiss uh, artist and she is traveling, but she will try to join us today. Um, Menhal Isa is uh, an artist who was at the Scope Art Show and he is currently in Paris, France, so unable to join us. And myself, uh, and then Nizar Sabur is a Russian Syrian artist. He's also traveling uh, in Russia now, unable to uh, join us. Asteria Segura from Cuba. Uh, he's also traveling. He, he was in Miami, but when we finished the exhibition, he had uh, a big project in Spain uh, for his sculpture. So he had to travel and unable to join us today. And Zahra Nazari from Iran, she, uh, we exhibited her work at the uh, uh, Kendall Art Center. She's not with us tonight uh, because she's not part of the exhibition at Scope. Uh, so we changed the artist slightly for each exhibition. And the artist that participated in the Scope, the recent one, is uh, Elon Everbook, uh, myself. We have Menhal Isa, Nizar Sabur, and Estereo Segura. For the past two years, uh, I kept on fine-tuning the concept of crossing borders. And of course, it's not just me, because after I submitted the proposal several times to different arts organizations, I was happy to have some top curated uh, people uh, and knows the art industry very well and made suggestions to adjust certain things to add different artists. And we did. And as you could see, we have very top artists from each country and created marketing campaign uh, for social media and imprints. We created the catalogs uh, for the overall catalog for certain exhibitions. This is the latest marketing campaign that we did for uh, the Scope Art Show in Miami during uh, Miami Art Week. And it highlights only the six artists were showing at this show. And of course, the same theme, we carried it through all the marketing campaign on social media, in email marketing, direct email marketing campaign, and uh, anything that we touched and communicated, even on a, an individual basis with certain or, uh, people in the arts industry and arts organizations. This is some highlights from the latest exhibition at the uh, Scope Art Fair in Miami, which was just closed on Sunday. And uh, as everybody know, Art Miami Week is the top uh, art shows in the country. Uh, every year, it's the first week of December, which is uh, planned uh, with Art Basel exhibitions. So a number of exhibitions happen uh, during the first week. Art Basel is the most well-known. And then we have Art Miami, Context, Scope, Untitled. Those are the top art exhibitions uh, in the world, I would say, not just in, in America. So we have, after almost two years of closure and um, cancellations of exhibitions and gathering in the U.S., in Europe, and elsewhere, finally, uh, Florida was opened up to the international travelers. And we were lucky to have two months ago um, the kind of uh, uh, restrictions in Florida was lifted. Specifically in mind was the Art Basel, Art Miami week. So the mask was not 
a requirement, but it was highly encouraged. So you could see now in these images, some people with masks and others without. And of course, during the exhibitions, we have uh, uh, many, many interested people from all over the world. Uh, we, I created different marketing pieces, for example. Uh, the picture on top left has uh, an explanation of Elon Overbook uh, drawings. Those are wonderful uh, mixed media drawings that Elon creates them, he conceptualizes uh, his projects before it happens. And this is where he puts down all his ideas on paper, and then he submits these uh, ideas for public art projects. So in order for the public to understand uh, Elon's work, I had to create a uh, drawings next to an actual photograph of the existing public art project. So, and, and I got a lot of good feedback based on this little frame I'm holding in my hand, showing his uh, realization of the project. You know, basically I'm taking the uh, viewers uh, almost to Elan's studio to see how Elan thinks and put his ideas on paper, and then they can see the actual final uh, public art project. And different artists also, they have different uh, uh, process uh, of doing art. Some, as you can see, there's a mixture of abstractions, uh, realism, representational, conceptual. This, what, this is what makes this uh, group exhibition is very interesting because it's all unique uh, to the individual artist style and the way they think. And these are uh, images, highlights from the exhibition at Kendall Art Center back in August 2021. And we have a number of uh, uh, Cuban artist in this exhibition, uh, of course, along with the Middle Eastern artist. And uh, we have uh, uh, from Venezuela, Linda Bahar, and from Iran, uh, Zahra Nazari. And from Haiti uh, is Edward Duval Carey. And in the uh, picture on the lower left side, uh, which has some of the artists, some of the attendants, but uh, we have uh, Jose Bedia uh, uh, behind us, uh, those two paintings with a sculpture. And uh, just to give you a little background about how each artist works in terms of Jose Bedia, uh, he brings his uh, heritage, Cuban heritage, into his contemporary world. So he was able to combine uh, some of the highlights and some of tension, the Cold War tension between America and Russia in, in the 60s during uh, John F. Kennedy and the Cuban Missile Crisis. Those paintings and the, that sculpture, it's a, it's a soldier uh, with, uh, you know, an animal, uh, headed soldier holding a rifle and then two paintings of showing the American fleet on the verge of invading Cuba. Mm -hmm. And then the Cuban Missile Crisis were resolved at the last minute. But he did it not from the political uh, point of view. He really did it from a cultural, uh, artistic uh, way of incorporating these happenings in his old heritage and in his adopted country, which he lives in Miami. And uh, on the bottom, uh, 
right, we have uh, Linda Bahar uh, from Venezuela and uh, Niz- uh, Zahra Nazari uh, from Iran. Again, you know, uh, Zahra, she combines some of her heritage, uh, mostly in architectural forms, but in a very abstract way, uh, she was able to, to create something unique to her Persian heritage and the American lifestyle. And then Linda also, she created something from her heritage uh, from Venezuela. And Linda lives uh, in, in Florida most of the time. And, and she's a wonderful um, silkscreen block uh, uh, wood cut, uh, printer and she conceptualized uh, everything around feminism. So she brings a uniqueness to the mixture of artists and concepts of these exhibitions. And then the top right, uh, we have uh, Edward Duval Carey from Haiti. He's very highly intellectual. He was with us in the previous uh, art talk uh, back in August. He also brings Haitian history uh, into his contemporary style, very unique, very vivid color, and uh, uses a lot of symbols, a lot of... uh, historical facts in a playful way. And uh, also in the background, in the, on the right side of the same image is one of my paintings, which is uh, uh, I started doing back in 2015 to 2020 series of paintings uh, based on chaos. And the reason for the chaos as everyone know, was the Syrian war. Um, I was born in Aleppo, Syria. Uh, so uh, my, uh, even though I live in America, uh, I live between uh, New Jersey and South Florida. It's the chaos intrigued me that I had to present it in a fresh contemporary way. And this is a close-up of what I just mentioned about these, so you could see some details of this wonderful sculpture. It's a deer-headed soldier, human soldier, holding a rifle. And you could see the uh, American ship with air, you know, it's an aircraft uh, carrier, and something from the sky that saved Cuba at the last minute, you could see the line uh, coming from the sky. And on the left side, we have uh, in the middle, which I didn't talk about yet, is uh, another Cuban artist. Uh, her name is uh, uh, Yvonne uh, Ferrar. And she presented some something unique she does also she's a good uh, art teacher she in uh, uh, sculpture and in uh, uh, you know at, at the Kendall Art Center they have a school um, many artists uh, in list in this school so they teach paintings they teach uh, uh, sculptures uh, and porcelain uh, sculptures. They do a lot of plate uh, glazing sculptures. And this is uh, one of uh, the paintings of Kelly Fisher. She's uh, uh, American, Swiss. She spends her Uh, year between Switzerland and uh, Tennessee. So she's currently traveling and she will try to find a few minutes to join us. If not, I will continue talking about her artwork here. But she's an abstract artist. 
but she recently started incorporating human figures uh, into her artwork. So she's definitely uh, on the American expressionism uh, tradition and with introducing some European touches into the artwork. So you could see the human figures. We've, we've seen the human figures done by a number of artists in Europe. Um, uh, so it's very refreshing. Recently, she did an exhibition in Toledo, Spain. That picture on the top left is in Toledo, Spain, was done in an uh, in old uh, building, uh, something like about four or 500 year old building. Uh, so it's a museum, uh, which you could see the walls. <laughs> it's, it's kind of brick old walls, some of the walls, but it gives it a nice, unique, uh, artistic and heritage uh, to complement the artwork itself. This is uh, for Elan. So I will turn over the conversation and introduce Elan of her book uh, to talk about his artwork. And uh, I know Elan for many years. Both Elan and I uh, met at the School of Visual Arts back in the early 80s, and we became friends ever since. Go ahead, Elan. Um, can I speak? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, it's true. We met uh, many years ago when we were very young um, and just arrived in this uh, place or recently arrived in this place. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was years of uh, slowly uh, stepping step by step, you know, to where we are now. Um, but uh, and the idea of uh, uh, showing with Tony was for me, I mean, in the beginning there, it was just Tony's ideas about showing Middle Eastern artists. And I love this idea because uh, it's such a fraught place, the Middle East, and so many um, painful things happening there. And I think it's so simple to, um, see to show to make art together and to show it together and so i immediately agreed to this idea and i found it to be a um, refreshing idea it's enlarged itself and you know it's now not the middle east only but uh, there are many artists from many places um but you know i'm feeling sensitive to a lot of uh, especially the Americas, you know, I traveled extensively for almost two years in uh, South America after I finished my life in Israel and before I started studying art. So I'm quite familiar with, with those countries and the, the desire to come to the state and um, etc. Uh, my work is uh, as Tony described it, I am I am conceptualizing my work on paper, large pieces of paper where I draw ideas. It's sometimes small sketches and sometimes larger sketches. Um, sketches that try to find uh, what I want to see. And once I do find, and if it's accepted, wherever it is, a public project or an exhibition, I create it. Uh, for that purpose. Sometimes I create it even if it's not accepted, just for myself. And and so you see here, it's a nice board that you made with a comparison between the sketch and the sculpture. Uh, the top one is the last one I made in Florida. It's a Corten and, and Steel sculpture, um, the sun on the edge, and you see the drawing. Uh, there are more than one sculpture in that drawing. Uh, and uh, then you see below it, there is uh, a sculpture I built on the Mario M. Como Bridge in New York called Tappanzi, which is the old name of the bridge um, taken away from the bridge. I love the name because it was 
Tapan is the name of the tribe with the canoes that used to uh, live in that place. Um, they is the uh, Dutch colonizer word for sea. And so it was the sea of the Tapans. And therefore it was called Tapanze. And I thought this name should not go away. So I gave the name Tapanze to the sculpture. Uh, and if we go down the list, there is a theater of the wind, the way I proposed it to one place and build it in another place. It uh, was proposed, I think, through a, um, a, a college and eventually was built in Arizona. Uh, and down from it, there are um, uh, images of a whole exhibition that I had at Nancy Hoffman Gallery in New York. Uh, with one of the sculptures on the right that uh, was on a pedestal, stone pedestal in the exhibition. Um, the, sculpt the big drawing which we see on the left, it has the sun and it has this kind of group of, you, can, you may say, figures carrying a stone canoe. And so that means it's the two of the sculptures that you see on the top and the second to the top. The moon is still waiting and I almost propose it um, and uh, I was going to propose it this week to a place I'm sort of uh, in the final phase uh, for, and then I changed my mind, and it will wait uh, till I will find appropriate place for it. It needs a specific place. It's, a, it's like a big ball. Um, but uh, the idea is, uh, you know, I, I am working with very materialistic uh, things, you know, like stone, recycled stone, steel, uh, glass, and uh, other material like that, and um, and try to create a kind of symbolic, historic, historically connected uh, world. And definitely a lot of them come from my life in Israel as a kid till I was 20, 21. Uh, and Later, you know, lots of influence from my two years trips in South Central and South America. And, and, and of course, we all get the stamps of New York and America and modernism, uh, which we discover when we go to school or go to see exhibition in galleries and museums. So, um, I think probably every, one of us in this exhibition have a similar route, not similar results, but similar routes of of growing into this uh, art world. Uh, it's unfortunate that I was not in Miami. I would have loved to see it, uh, the kind of the hoopla of Miami. I showed a couple of times in Art Basel in Basel, but um, I and I also showed in uh, Miami, but in the art fair, but uh, not this time. So except with you, Tony. Um, of the the two drawings that are in the show. So, yeah, I am uh, looking forward to continuing to hear the other artists, what they have to say about their work. Uh, Elan, quick question. Uh, if you could explain to the viewers the materials that you use. Mm -hmm. We see wood, stone, uh, we see uh, steel, all kind of face things. So I am, you know, I uh, when I came to New York, I looked for materials and I looked for what can I make sculpture with. And the easiest thing in New York was to go with a cart and find stone lying around in the streets of New York because every time they pulled up the street, they take all these big granite slabs that were making the curb stones or the cobblestone on the sidewalk and leaving it there. And so I would go with a cart, collect them, and build in School of Visual Art, where Tony saw my work first, uh, uh, those sculptures. Um, steel was something that I learned um, mostly here, you know, to work with steel. It was a kind of a necessity to, uh, if you want to be a sculptor, and with the tradition of the 16 steel. And so I learned and I became a, 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 the, the teacher, uh, uh, the teacher for steel sculpture in School of Visual Art at a certain point. And, um, and so, you know, it became part of my work as steel as a structure, but also steel as a material. So um, it's very contrasty to the colors of stone. Stones are light color usually. 
uh, and I use um, dirty stones, stone with patina of years, you know, they are all recycled stones. So in all the sculpture, you can see marks of what the stones were. Uh, I recut them, but I try very hard to leave some of this aging process. It gives the stone a dimension, not of uh, something very smooth, you know, but something that have been once something useful and now it is becoming something else. Wonderful. Thank you, Ilan. And Linda Bahar uh, from Venezuela. Um, I met Linda here in South Florida uh, a few years ago and I attended her exhibitions and uh, I really uh, enjoyed her uh, unique uh, style of feminism and, ha and also the process of uh, woodblock printing. So, Linda, please uh, hey, Tony. go ahead. Uh, thank you, Tony, and thank you, Elle, for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be with uh, such a great artist. And I am talking, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. I was born in Venezuela. I've been living here in the state uh, from the year 2000. I raised, I raised my girls here and, you know, I'm very grateful for everything that the state gave us, including my um, master education since I uh, graduated from Florida Atlantic University. Um, uh, I worked with glass for many, many years. And after uh, around 10 years ago, I decided to reinvent myself, get back to the university uh, and did, do my master. And I graduated in concentration printmaking. Uh, my, my process is a little bit different than just traditional printmaking. I'm combining uh, uh, more, a lot of computers, I even design my images with video game softwares and, and I use a laser cutting machine to create the woodcuts. Uh, uh, that allow me to create images that are very precise, but at the same time, after I create those images that are very intricate and precise, made by the computer, I print it in a traditional way. I ink it manually, press it in a... Uh, printed in a press, and that gave the paper and the bossing of the paper a life that I want to give it. It's not computer, it's not a maze, it's a combination of process. And this is a little bit about the technique. Uh, the concept is very important for me. I've been uh, working in this concept for more, more than uh, eight years. And I'm trying to be focused about the woman's body and to try to send the message that we are not objects. You are, we are humans. We, are, uh, we have different shapes. We have uh, different where to behave. But still, we have a lot of stereotypes. And I am trying to break those stereotypes. Not even break it, but at least to bring the conversation of things that are we take it as normally and are, are just standard position of society. That means that one of the things that tricked me when I was creating my work is that this video game software that I use to create the bodies and morphize the way that I want to be has poses for male and for female. And the male poses are very empowered. Instead, the, male, the female poses are very submissive. And I say like, wow, it's incredible that a software that is a 21st century software still have this kind of pre-established pre society standards. And I've been trying in my images to bring that uh, kind of conversation. I always use um, also uh, crochet patterns uh, to try to bring the idea of what is a feminine craft um, and the design and to bring the contrast of the black fever over the bodies and on the paper. And I've been playing with these ideas in many ways. In this case, uh, the one that the Tony show is in the slides, I have two works. One work in the center that is called Amigas. They is talking about friendship and is talking about you know, the way that, you know, sometimes even we have that kind of things that men can be friends and women, you know, they are competing to each other. And I think so that this is 
very, you know, nonsense. And I want to try and bring the idea of that we can be really good friends and very supportive and bring us each other, you know, in a good way. And the other images that are on the sites uh, is our, a work that I did on the pandem pandemic year in which I was feeling that, you know, I was ready to fly. I was ready to open my wings and go away. And this kind of work represents the stage of my year, my st the stage of that time in the pandemic year. Um, uh, I keep working in this kind of subject matter. I also bring, a, uh, this time I'm working in idea, bring my Venezuelan culture back to the, to the subject matter. And I'm working in a woman that are devils that is called Diablas. And bring that iconography of uh, Venezuelan mask of Diablas, the, Diablos del Yare to the images. But it's very important as an immigrant and part of this project is what you come from and what you are is the same thing, but it's complemented each other and always living inside of you. And this is what I like about this exhibition that um, each of us have a lot of what we live in and what we are here in the state and a lot of what we bring in with us because we are a complex human beings. And um, this is a, a little bit about my process and about my work. And thank you, Tony and Elle, for everything, you know, that putting all this show together. And hopefully to, to see you soon and keep working, you know. My pleasure, Linda. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, this is uh, my work. Uh, and, of course, I wanted to highlight a little bit about my uh previous work versus my current work and and the importance and the significance of and the connection also between the two um, i mentioned before um, be, due to the, the syrian war i had to create something chaotic so chaos series emerged from 2015 to 2020. I've done over 75 paintings. Uh, the one on the left side, as you can see, this particular one is called The Breeze in Aleppo. And as we kept on listening and hearing the news, uh, uh, Aleppo was on the verge of total collapse uh, from uh, ISIS takeover. So the civilians were suffering. Uh, in my work, I'm, I'm not interested in politics at all. I'm all interested in the social unrest, the cultural undermining of culture uh, by certain groups. Um, so I wanted to highlight the beauty of these neighborhoods. And uh, I showed in this one, a typical uh, Aleppo neighborhood. It's been completely you know, uh, destroyed. But at the same time, I wanted to show, uh, to show it in color, to give it uh, a playful uh, texture to make it positive rather than negative, even though we are looking at many destroyed uh, objects. But after all, every object and every construction and everything human touched is blessed by God. Everything has a value, even whether it's in use or whether it is destroyed, it has a value. And uh, so I wanted to highlight that with vivid color as uh, I remember going to a candy store uh, as a child. Uh, as you walk into a candy store, as we all know, you have a big smile on your face. Now I was thinking, how can I put a smile on people's faces who not only lived through this destruction, but 
I'm talking the audience. My audience was the world uh, and specifically the American audience because I live in America. And how can I make them understand the magnitude of what's happening to people? Uh, and I wanted to, uh, to color it, uh, make it playful. So now I, uh, from this until 2020, I came, uh, you know, I started doing some Florida scenes and uh, I wanted to make that connection between Florida and the chaos. And the reason for that is, is by flipping the coin completely opposite side from chaos to prosperity. Now, prosperity, we live in it uh, in America. It's the American dream for every immigrant. And uh, Florida in particular is the ultimate American dream uh, in terms of weather, uh, landscape, color. It's, it's, it's full of color. Whereas you go to the North uh, States, uh, you, you start to see a lot of grays, especially in winter time. So I, those intrigued me. Uh, so I flipped the coin and I started doing the American Dream series. And at the same time, I wanted to bring my old heritage and culture into the American Dream series. So I started, uh, I'm, I'm very well a uh, researcher. I've been researching, studying all my life. I love history. I love mythology. Uh, from ancient Mesopotamia, Assyria, Jewish history, Greek history, Roman history, and so on. So I'm now currently started to use all these historical uh, images and symbols into my surroundings and my happenings. So I picked, uh, uh, you know, the South Florida sceneries and I did I added uh, some of the historical images uh, so we see uh, for example Ishtar is the goddess of love and war Ishtar is the first goddess ever existed in human civilizations before the Greek and the Romans Ishtar was the foundation and the concept and the inspiration for all artists going forward. So the Greek, when they took over the Middle East, Alexander the Great took all the artists from the Middle East to Athens to teach Greek artists and architects and philosophers and musicians, everything. So based on Ishtar, I'll give you just one sample. So. We don't go into many uh, samples in other areas. Uh, Aphrodite was created by the Greek based on Ishtar. Then the Romans took over the entire of Europe and the Middle East. And the Romans, artists, again, created Venus, as we know, in the Re in Italian Renaissance, Venus is the ultimate. And, and then uh, during the Re Renaissance or afterward, even into today's American nude models, it's, it's all, if we trace it, it goes back to Ishtar. So that, that's very important historical fact that I brought it in a playful way with Miami uh, sceneries. Uh, and then, of course, the... Uh, uh, the Guardians, this is called the Guardians of South uh, Beach. And uh, the uh, bull-headed hu uh, human with wings represents the gods and powers. And now, uh, going forward, I would love to abstract my paintings further to give it a little bit more uniqueness. And uh, these are just examples of uh, the uh, past and present, and then talking about the future. And uh, uh, the works uh, constantly evolve, as we all know. We're all artists, we all have to experiment 
in order for our experimentation to succeed, we will go through many hurdles and make mistakes. And then on the next one and the next one, we all make refinements and uh, we keep on refining. It's an ever uh, lasting learning experience, but that's the beauty of art. It's, it's discoveries, uh, you know, research and uh, execution. And uh, so this, basically, the uh, exhibition, uh, the gallery space at Scope uh, Art Show, and uh, showing the six different artists here. And we have uh, uh, talking about Estereo Segura, as you can see those two heart with wings planes. Estereo Segura is a Cuban artist. Uh, he's, uh, he lives between Cuba, uh, America, Miami, of course, and Spain. And he's got studios in those three uh, places. And uh, he brings his heritage, Cuban heritage, into his work. So he's, he brings some of the Cold War, for example, uh, during the 60s from the Cuban Missile Crisis. And the immigration is a big, big theme in his work. And those planes, the heart with wings, is really touching on immigration, how the Cuban society are flying out of Cuba. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, the past and the present. So all these artists have uh, similar approaches in a different, unique way. And I wanted to uh, uh, conclude my presentation by uh, mentioning the upcoming exhibitions, Crossing Borders, uh, this contemporary art exhibition with cultural events, uh, art talk by the artist, music by uh, any uh, heritage uh, musicians from any country uh, that these artists are from. So we can present uh, an event with cultural music, with documentary film from any of these artists' uh, background. And of course, culinary talks is very important. And if you look at these, these are universal languages, whether it's food, film, music, and visual art, uh, everybody understands it. Uh, uh, you know, from a child to an elderly, they all understand it. They don't have to have any, uh, uh, you know, uh, art experience or, or even cultural experience. The combination of these visual pieces connect with people. And the idea for this exhibition is to bring people together through the arts and culture and to have this, uh, to engage them in uh, visual and physical uh, conversation to respect each other, of course. After all, we all are human, we all are uh, smart, and uh, uh, even uh, certain areas are, have a different uh, culture than others. But after all, we all came from one uh, culture, and we trace it back, way back to the Middle Eastern culture. So, and the, the art, warehouse at Delray Beach uh, with co-curator Grace Getnay. She, we will do this exhibition starting January 7 to February 26 in 2022. That's my mistake. It should be said 2022. And then following uh, Gasper Art Center in Dania Beach in Fort Lauderdale with co-curator Laura Gasper in May 2022. So stay tuned and we will have more of these exhibitions and cultural Zoom events. Thank you so much. And thank you, Ali, for visiting this exhibition and seeing it for yourself. Uh,
You gave a very so, personal tour. I was very fortunate to uh, be able to see the work in you know, up close and get a very personal tour from you of each of the different artists and what they were trying to do. I enjoyed it very much. Um, I, I might say a little bit about myself for people who are meeting. Yes, please do. Yeah. I have been uh, organizing a series of artist talks over the past 10 years, and they're called Art Salons. Um, they were in person at the Armory Art Center in West Palm Beach for many years, and now, of course, they're virtually on Zoom, as this is. Um, and one of the things that's happened over all of these years all of the artists are from South Florida, and Florida is, and South Florida even more so, um, just the most amazing mix of people from every corner of the world. And I personally have always been very interested in culture and in how people live and um, in, in the different experiences that people have all over the world and found it very exciting to be living here. And that has come into my art salons in so many ways. Um, I know Linda and a, another artist that she was a student with at Florida Atlantic University <clears throat> when I met them um, around 2012. And they were doing a project together, um, a collaboration. And it was a fascinating project because Linda is a Jewish immigrant from Venezuela. She has um, many relatives in Israel. And her very close friend and fellow student at that time was Rahila Filsufi, who was Iranian. And the two of them put together a collaborative project of peace between Israel and Iran. And it was an amazingly powerful uh, experience to hear them talking about it. So that was something I wanted to share to this. And I'm sorry she's not here to hear that. Um, does anyone else have anything that they would like to add to this? I think this has been fascinating and yeah. Um, I'm very happy that it's been recorded and it will be shared with many more people. <laughs>